In this illustration, what you see are several orders of structure of chromatin, starting at the top with DNA, naked double helical DNA. It first associates with a number of proteins called histones. The double helix wraps itself around histones, a, a core of eight of them plus H1, another histone, so nine histones. And these form structures which you can see in the electron microscope called nucleosomes. They, in uh, aggregate, look like beads on a string, and we'll actually see that in a moment. And that would be the 10 nanometer filament referred to here. And the 10 nanometer filament coils up to form a 30 nanometer fiber. The 30 nanometer fiber, in turn, coils again to form looped domains, which are actually loops of DNA protruding from a protein-rich scaffold in the center. And I'll have a photograph to show you what that is. Now, some of these transitions from nucleosome or 10 nanometer filaments to 30 nanometer fibers and to loop domains are the result of the addition or accretion, if you will, of proteins to these structures. We refer to the histone proteins as the basis for nucleosome structure and other proteins that associate with DNA to form chromatin and ultimately chromosomes as non-histone proteins. And not shown in this picture are the roles of non-histone proteins in associating with the 10 nanometer filaments to create these higher order 30 nanometer structure and loop domain structures. But that's what happens. And finally, in the run up again to mitosis, as you approach prophase, more proteins attach to the chromatin, to the structure at this point that are loop domains, to force them to compact, to cover over the DNA in the loops and create what we usually call a chromosome, this thing that we see in metaphase, which actually contains already duplicated DNA in chromatids. These are a pair of chromatids, and what happens at the constriction that you see, this is where the microtubules of the spindle apparatus will attach and eventually pull the chromatids apart, and each of the chromatids then becomes a chromosome in its own right in a daughter cell. So there's our metaphase chromosome. And as I said, you get these higher order structures because more proteins, more different non-histone proteins, have attached to the chromatin to force it to fold and, and coil into even more compact shapes. So here's how we come to understand chromatin structure. I have a photograph here of a nucleus in a cell. And if you fractionate the nuclei, you treat them with a low salt concentration and then look at what you get in the electron microscope, Lo and behold, you see 10 nanometer filaments. The 10 nanometers, by the way, refers to the diameter of the little beads. And what are the beads? The beads are those nucleosomes we talked about. So these were what were called beads on a string, by analogy. If you take the beads on a string, the 10 nanometer filaments, and you increase the salt concentration, you get the 30 nanometer solenoid. The solenoid, by the way, refers in electricity or electronics to a coil of wire. And so the analogy here is the 10 nanometer filament is coiling up on itself to form a solenoid-like structure. That's three times in diameter what the nucleosome beads are. All you need to do is increase the salt concentration. So clearly there are ionic interactions, charge interactions that are responsible for the transition between the 10 and the 30 nanometer structures. The 30 nanometer solenoid becomes looped structures, and the looped structures can condense into chromosomes. And this is by the addition of more proteins. 